All right. The time has come. Favorite segments here. It's Flashback Friday. So gather around the fire for a blast from the past. And in honor of last night's draft, we're going to take a little flashback at the five best Timberwolves draft picks of all time. And Sam, to be honest, <laughs> I had a little trouble coming up with this thing because up until yeah. the last few years with Cat and Ant, the Timberwolves front office was not hitting a very good average. So first couple honorable mentions, Zach Levine still ripping it up in the league, 13th overall pick from UCLA, gave the Wolves three fun seasons, eventually helped bring Jimmy Butler to Minnesota. Another honorable mention, how about Isaiah Ryder, fifth overall pick from UNLV yeah. in 93, averaged nearly 20 points per game, but again, only played three seasons here in Minnesota. Last one, you got to mention them at least. Christian Leitner, drafted third overall in 93 behind, of course, Shaquille O'Neal and Alonzo Mourning. Pretty good. I think we all know how that story ended. Leitner played, again, three seasons with Minnesota. Quick thoughts on those uh, three before we jump into my top five. Yeah, yeah. you going old school with a couple of those mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I'm not going to knock Leitner. Leitner's a, a super exciting player. Didn't really match the hype in, in the NBA that he did in college. But He's got a documentary uh, about him, though, so... Yeah, yeah. What is I hate Christian Leitner. Is that yeah. the name of it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Isaiah Ryder, yeah, another one who just who was super talented, kind of had some, you know, off court issues and, and didn't really, again, live out mm -hmm. what Wolves fans were hoping, but another very talented player. And what was your third one? Uh, Zach Levine. Zach, Zach Levine. Levine I, he, Only three years here, but boy, he was fun. When he Super came out in those fine. first couple of years, man. Uh, remember, he went to the uh, dunk yeah. contest, put on a show. A lot of fun during those three years. No, no doubt. And if he's still playing for the Wolves now, he's probably in the top five. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, sure. I mean, when you look at what he's become in Chicago, uh, honestly, Luke, I mean, who are we kidding? Levine's going to be the next ex-Wolf to, to have a ring. Of course. That, that's probably going to happen. But no, let's uh, let's get into this top five. I'm, I'm excited to see what list you have. And uh, I'm kind of rapidly compiling mine in my head right now. And it's uh, it is a little tricky to it's, come up with like a firm five. It's actually pretty depressing, man. Once you end <laughs> up looking at some of the other great teams and franchises in the NBA and seeing all the potential the Wolves could have, should have, eras of basketball in Minnesota over the last couple decades. All right, number five on the list. Stephon Marbury, again, though, only spent three seasons with the Wolves, but we all know the rest. What's funny about this is the Bucks actually drafted Marbury fourth overall in 96 and then traded him for Ray Allen, one of the all-time greats in NBA history, who was drafted by the Wolves with the very next pick. So, I mean, Stephon Marbury, yeah, pretty good. Makes the top five, but could have had Ray Allen, Sam. Yeah, that one hurts. That was the, the first of many draft mm -hmm. hurts, and... It, I, I'm sure I'm going to forget somebody, too, because I'm looking at the list that only shows literally who the Wolves picked. Oh, sure. So it, it shows Ray Allen. Mm -hmm. doesn't show oh, Marbury. So, sure. I mean, so there's already one name that I probably would have had on the list. But what about, I mean, so if you think about talent, certainly edge to Marbury. But when you compare him to Rubio, mm -hmm. that was my number five. Mm -hmm. Rubio absolutely captured the imagination of the fans here. His passing was amazing. He was a better teammate than Marbury. He played here longer than Marbury. He had like a, a reunion with the Wolves, came back and was beloved. Um, again, and a lot of these guys, they just didn't quite become what you wanted them to. But I think Rubio, maybe he belongs more in the honorable mention category. But I think he's right on the edge there, right around number five. Both have a little bit bad taste in your mouth, obviously. We mm -hmm. know Rubio was selected before Steph Curry, along with Johnny Flynn. Stephon Marbury, again, tied to trading away Ray Allen. Number four on the list, Wally Zerbiak. Six overall, 99, mm -hmm. out of Ohio. Seven seasons with the Wolves. Now we're getting somewhere. One-time All-Star. A lot of fun to watch for all those years. He was eventually traded to the Boston Celtics in a blockbuster deal. Any memories of Wally that stick out to you? Yeah, Wally was the first jersey that I ever owned there for the you Wolves. Go. Uh, I had this thing for like weird names. So I had Doug Mankiewicz, <laughs> the Twins, and I had Wally Zerbiak for the Wolves. And I was such a nerd back then that I would just brag to everybody that I could spell Zerbiak, you know, S-C-C-Z-E-R-B-I-A-K. Um, loved Wally's shot. Mm -hmm. It was a pure three-point shot, and um, he was kind of the, the right-hand man there for KG for a few years when my like sports knowledge was just kind of coming into its own. I loved watching Wally and KG, so 
that was uh, that was a good era. Too bad it they didn't fun. win like a playoff series ever. But ever it was not fun once. Well, <laughs> w- when you end up squeezing in and playing the number one seed every year, the Los Angeles Lakers, and Kobe and Shaq, <laughs> like every year, pretty unrealistic. That as much yeah. as we love Wally, he's gonna be able to carry that team past guys like Kobe and Shaq. All right, number three on the list. Kevin Love, originally the fifth overall pick from Memphis out of UCLA in 2008. Remember, another draft day trade. Remember, the Wolves drafted O.J. Mayo with the third pick. Swap selection. Love goes on to play six seasons. Three-time All-Star. Averaged 20 points, 12 boards. It's just a machine and the focal point of the Wolves team during that era. Thoughts on Kevin Love's time in Minnesota and career as a whole. Obviously, goes and hooks up with LeBron, adds a ring to the uh, resume. Yeah, well, this is my own fault for ill preparedness, but I I need to adjust my list already because again the trade deal has thrown me off because I didn't I didn't consider Love obviously Love is is a top five draft pick mm-hmm. I think he knocks Rubio off my list mm-hmm. I think Love is Love is five Wally becomes four and Rubio is firmly in the honorable mention category. Kevin Love was sort of the shooting big man before it was trendy. Mm-hmm. Like he was at the very front end of that trend when suddenly he was, you know, shooting threes, getting 22 rebounds a night. I didn't he have a 30-30 game along the way. Yeah, like he he did. he did things that had never been done in the NBA before, and that's another gigantic wasted prime for the Wolves because that was an amazing player that just never had the the supporting cast and they never made the playoffs. That's a huge bummer. Yeah, you start to go through this list and you just feel this black cloud hanging over the Timberwolves organization because as you see, a lot of these guys, Kevin Love, Andrew Wiggins, you name it, Ray Allen, whoever it may be, end up winning a championship by the time it's all said and done. All right, number two on the list. We got a tie for number two, Sam. Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards, because both selected number one overall, but it's too early to tell which one will go have the better Wolves career. Cat came out in 2015 out of Kentucky, of course, cup all-stars to his resume. And of course, from a lot of people's perspective and experts say, maybe one of the best or most talented big men in the NBA. Anthony Edwards has flashed greatness already, two seasons under his belt, and his trajectory, I mean, his stock still pointing way up. Things could only get better from here thoughts on the tie here tough to pick one how do you go i think i go with cat and Mm -hmm. that's mainly for for longevity Mm -hmm. seven years um he's he's shooting the following slash line 53 percent from the field 40 percent from three for his career seven years as a big man how many shots is that in just total that's almost two thousand threes wow he's shooting 40 percent and you know, and from the free throw line, 83%. I mean, that he is one of the greatest shooting big men of all time. And he's probably not properly appreciated because he hasn't had playoff success. He can be a little bit whiny on the court. Um, and I think Anthony Edwards has the ability to pass him quickly. I think it's like a 2A and 2B at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I give the edge to Cat because he has done it for a longer period of time. And he's done very unique things for his position. But I think Edwards has the ability to fuel a team's playoff success, whereas Cat probably needs to be like the, the, the second banana. He needs to be the supporting superstar. Uh, but I will go Cat for what he's accomplished in seven years in the league. He's my number two. Ant is my number three. Yeah, makes sense. Can't argue again. Longevity, seven seasons under the belt. Cat's got it. If it were to end a day, obviously Cat's going to get that. But if you just look at the natural road to development and progression that Anthony Edwards is on, you assume he would eclipse at some point in his career Carl Anthony Towns. No knock on Cat by any means. It's just what we've seen, what he's flashed already under two seasons, has a chance to be one of the best Timberwolves of all time. Going to be a lot of fun to watch his career continue to develop over the next few years. All right, finally, number one on the list. No big surprise here. The big ticket. Rasho Nesterovich. Kevin Garnett. <laughs> Nikolo Pekovic. There he is. All right. The big ticket. Kevin Garnett, fifth overall pick out of Farragut Academy, 1995. 14 seasons in Minnesota. 10-time All-Star, as if there was ever a doubt who the number one pick would be. KG, the best pick of all time in Minnesota Timberwolves history. Your thoughts? Yeah, just the heartbeat of a city um, for for 12 years. And I wonder sometimes, 
if the Wolves hadn't had the 2004 playoff run mm -hmm. where Garnett wills them to a Game 7 victory over the Kings, um, puts up 32 points, I want to say about 20, <laughs> 21 rebounds, like mm -hmm. five blocks, jumps on the scores table, uh, just an epic, epic Game 7. If If not for that, I wonder how he'd be viewed in this town because then you'd be talking about a, a full career really with no playoff series wins at all. But they did have the one year, and it was uncharted territory for the Wolves at the time. He took them into a new frontier. Now, the problem is that they couldn't back it up because of mismanagement. They had they lost a million first-round picks in the Joe Smith ordeal. Glenn Taylor has never been the greatest owner of all time. Um, and the fact that Flip Saunders and KG just couldn't have that sustained success is, is, is really a bummer. And they ran into the buzzsaw that was the Lakers dynasty. The mm -hmm. three-peat Lakers were in really the heyday of where the Wolves could have been kind of that, that beloved um, other Western Conference power. And the Lakers kept getting in their way. And they got in their way in 2004 in the Western Conference Finals when, uh, when they knocked the Wolves off in six. So... Garnett will, uh, I mean, Hall of Fame player, unbelievable leader, unbelievable effort, unbelievable defense. He just, he really changed an organization. Unfortunately, the changes that he helped enact weren't long lasting just because of so many factors that you're out of, out of everyone's control and the upper crust of the Wolves. Um, I, I, I wish that he could have experienced better yeah. in Minnesota. That's how I'll leave it. You look back. Almost a case can be made that it was even more impressive what he did with so little help around him. He literally carried and willed that team to so many impressive seasons with not a lot of talent around him. When you looked at their opponents like top teams in the league at the time, like a Kobe and Shaq did, thankfully he did go on, got his ring in Boston. I think Wolves fans were secretly smiling over that one, saying, yeah, finally, he got one. He deserved it for sure. That's your top five. Not exactly the most prestigious list by any means. Fun fact, though, Sam, do you know who hmm. the very first pick for the Timberwolves organization was? Pooh Richardson. Pooh Richardson. You looked. You cheated. All right. Very first pick, Timberwolves organization, 1989. Again, only played three seasons, but 10th overall pick out of UCLA, averaged 15 and 10 per game. And that, my friends, is your flashback Friday. Sam, thanks for joining me for a little blast from the past. Good times by all. We're back here Monday breaking down more Twins, Vikings, plenty more. Remember to like, rate, review, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us every day for another episode covering all the biggest topics in Minnesota sports. He's Sam Ekstrom. Follow him on Twitter at Sam Ekstrom. I'm Luke Inman on Twitter at Luke underscore Spinman. Tune in Monday to Superior Sports Talk, part of Locked on Sports Minnesota. Minnesota. For Sam, I'm Luke. Until Monday, signing down. This is Superior Sports Talk with Reggie Wilson and Luke Inman, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota.